Mr. Robs here, and today we're going to talk about how in the world we draw these Voronoi diagrams. Okay, and in doing so, we're going to use this thing called an incremental algorithm, which means we do we start with our three points and we go step by step each point at a time. We don't plot all five points and then try and do it. We do a point adjust, point adjust, and that's the idea of what an incremental algorithm is. So in order to do it, we're going to plot points A, B, and C. So I start off with A, which is going to be Point A here, B is 310, and C is 9, 6. That is C. All right, and so we want to find our sketch the Voronoi diagram from here. So in doing so, we're going to look at the coordinate points, and I'm going to find a perpendicular bisector here. Now, one of the things that I notice is that if I use the symmetry of the grid, these are specially chosen points, this point here is the midpoint, because I go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, so my slope is 3, so when I'm making the perpendicular bisector, here's the midpoint, I'm going to go down 1 and over 3, and so it's going to be roughly down these points here, and so if I sketch this, it's really hard to do on the screen here, but I'll do the best I can. I'm going to be making this line here. So that's between A and B. Then I go to B and C and do again. And conveniently, if I go over 3 and up 2, over 3 and up 2, I get my midpoint. And so now my slope, if I go over 2 and down 3, over 2 and down 3 is the opposite of my slope. And I come through here and it should go through here approximately. And then finally I have A and C. And if I look carefully here, I know it's there's 8 here, so middle's 4, and there's 2. And so here is my midpoint. I go up 1 over 4. So now I'm going to go up 4 and over 1, and down 4 and over 1. And so one of the things I also know is that in Voronoi diagrams, whenever I have three perpendicular bisectors from three adjacent corners, they will always intersect at a common vertex. And that will always happen. So it helps in the sketching your diagram. And so I'm going to go through the intersection and through here. Okay, so now, which lines count, which lines don't count? I can start with one of the perpendicular bisectors that contains the midpoint. So I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to make it bold because I like this line. When I get to the vertex, then I turn, I know that I am, I'm going to look on this side here, do I keep this line or this line? And I look for the one that contains the midpoint between B and C. And so I look for the midpoint one and I know it's going to be this one here. Okay, then I turn and go in the other direction and I look for of the two lines which contains midpoint is this one here and so this will be my line my perpendicular bisector so here is my Voronoi diagram and I'm going to erase some of the other parts here that are not needed and so when you make your Voronoi diagrams you add things and you subtract things away you erase things away and I can double check to see how I'm doing if I Here's that. If I go to a program called GeoGebra, it actually has a really nice command. I put A, B, and C in here. And if I type in Voronoi, it will, you can put the points in and it will make it. And so if I look here, this is exactly what I have over here. It's the same thing. This point here is like 5, 6. 5, 6. It's pretty close. Okay. Granted, it says sketch. Sketch is a term that just means it has to be reasonable. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just got to be reasonable. And I think that's what I have here. So now, adding the incremental algorithm means I'm going to add point B next. So I come along here, point B, or sorry, D as in Dave, is at 9, 2. So 9, 2 is here. Okay, so step one, I want to find, so D is in the cell for C. So that's where I start. I start with the perpendicular bisector for C and D. I know, it's conveniently above each other, that I'm going to have a perpendicular bisector that goes here. 
Okay, now it hits this line here, and this edge is adjoining to A, to the site A. So then I look for the perpendicular bisector between A and D. So I do that one, and I can see by symmetry here, this is going to be the midpoint, and it's going to be coming down something like this approximately. And so then I can come along here, I can erase this part away, and I clearly have the new edge of the Voronoi diagram. Oh, let me change to blue. So here is my new Voronoi diagram with D added. And so just to recap, you start with the perpendicular bisector that the new point of the, of the site that the new point is added into. So D was added into the cell of C, so you make the perpendicular bisector with the site with C. You make the perpendicular bisector, you hit the line, the edge, and you go, what edge, what cell was that edge with? Well, that was with A. And so I make the perpendicular bisector then with A, and I make this one, and the rest go away. So then it says, show that the edge between A and D is this particular equation. Well, one of the things that I know, so I'm looking for this line here, which I'll make green. Well, I can clearly see by symmetry that this is down 1 and over 4, down 1 and over 4, so this is clearly the midpoint. And so the midpoint is 5, 3. And I can see the slope here is 1 negative to the right 4. So the slope of AD is equal to negative 1 4. So that means my perpendicular slope for AD is equal to 4. And so if I go y minus y1 is equal to 4, x minus x1. So I get y minus 3 is equal to 4, x minus 20. y is equal to 4, x minus 17. So I've just shown you that the perpendicular bisector is indeed 4x minus 17. All right, continuing along here, we are going to add, oh, I'll just, I'm going to check to make sure my diagram is correct over here. Here is my um, GeoGebra sketch. If I plot D, it pops up there. I put my perpendicular bisector and I get this scenario here and it does look pretty close to what I have here. They look fairly similar. Okay, so I feel like I'm doing this correctly. Going to E now. E is the point 6, 3. So I go 6, 3. All right, so E is put into the cell with D. So I start with its perpendicular bisector, and I'm going to use purple for this. And so estimating here, here's the midpoint, and perpendicular is going to be here. Okay, I hit the edge with C. So now I look for the perpendicular bisector between E and C. Well, if I look here, it's going to be about, I'm going to estimate here, is about the midpoint. And so perpendicular will be something like this. So that this would be perpendicular if I would connect them it would be perpendicular, and it comes over to here. Now it hits the edge with B. So I think about where would the perpendicular bisector be between E and B. Well, I know I go over 3, so it's going to be somewhere here, and I go up 2, 4, 6, 7, so I'm going to go up 3.5, so 3.5, and, and over here, so uh, right around here is the midpoint, and so if I want to be perpendicular, I know it has to come from here, so it's going to be probably right something, because I'm estimating something like this. This is going to be perpendicular. I hit this edge. It's now with A, so I'm looking for the perpendicular bisector with A. Here is approximately the midpoint, and so it's got a, the perpendicular bisector always intersects with a vertex. And so I think it's going to come down something like here. 
And so then I erase all of this inside part here. And E takes command of the main section of the screen. All right, and so let's me make these lines a little bit more bold and blue. So I believe this is what it looks like. And if we go over to Jojira, we can check and see. Let's put in E. There goes E. And if I make the Voronoi diagram, I get this shape here. And if I look at that, it seems to look like this. Fairly reasonable. Okay, awesome. And then finally, if each of these points represents an ice cream shop. Ice cream. Mm, yum. And if I'm standing at 4, 5, I'm standing right here at 4, 5. Which shop is closest? Well, E. I, e is closest because I am within the cell of E. And so I would go straight to E and get my ice cream. All right, so there is how we make our Voronoi diagram. We go step by step, and it, we do some estimating. We can actually calculate if we need to, but it is a incremental step-by-step. Step approach.